Hi, everybody. Admiral Bird. I want to talk about Admiral Bird. I'm trying to get this set up. I'm going to play a video. So this video, I'm going to put it in my playlist room. So this way, everybody can go to my playlist and watch the, the better quality uh, version of this. So hold on a second. So let me save this. It's going to be a new playlist named at, um, True North. So I'm going to put this video. Let's go to my playlist, everybody. So. All right. So as you can see, I'm live right now. So playlist. All right. And then uh, it's going to be under True North. See that? This is the video I'm going to play because it's quite information. Um, this is great information, and highly decorated. As a former of the Navy, I'm so happy. North Pole. As a former member of the Navy, I'm so happy to find an admiral. They can back up everything I'm saying. So we're going to watch a little video. Vice Admiral Richard E. Byrd's accounts. Rear Admiral Richard Byrd Jr. was an American naval officer who specialized in feats of exploration. He was a recipient of the Medal of Honor, the highest honor for valor given by the and was a pioneering American aviator, polar explorer, and organizer of polar logistics. On May 9, 1926, Admiral Byrd, along with his pilot Floyd Bennett, in an attempt to be the first to fly to the North Pole. About 16 hours later, they returned to the island in their Fokker trimotor airplane, the Josephine Ford, saying that they had indeed accomplished the feat. Bird submitted his navigational records to in a committee of the National Geographic Society, one of his sponsors, who confirmed the accomplishment according to the Ohio State University Libraries. Bird was hailed and given the Medal of Honor. However, for some unknown reason, Admiral Byrd's official accounts of his journey were not long after disproved and even denied. When you learn of what Admiral Byrd claims to have found and experienced on his Arctic North Polar journey, it becomes clear why the official channels of society decided to dismiss his claims. However, we must take into consideration the fact that Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd was a well-respected member of society, a decorated member of the U.S. Navy. The following is a reading of the official transcripts of Rear Admiral Richard E. Byrd's flight log recording during and after his pioneering journey deep into the unknown regions of the Arctic North Pole on the 19th of February, 1947. 0600 all preparations are complete for our flight northward and we are airborne with full fuel tanks at 06100 hours. 0620 hours. Humidor on starboard engine seems too rich. Adjustment made in Pratt Whitney's are running smoothly. 0730 hours. Radio champ. All is well and radio reception is normal. 0740 hours. Note slight oil leak in starboard engine. Oil pressure indicating normal, however. 0800 hours. Slight turbulence noted from easterly direction at an altitude of 2300. And Correction to 1,700 feet. No further turbulence, but tailwind increases. Slight adjustment in throttle controls. Aircraft is very well now. 0815 hours. Radio check with base camp. Situation normal. 0830 hours. Turbulence encountered again. Increase altitude to 2,900 feet. Smooth flight conditions again. 0910 hours. Ice and snow below. No coloration of a yellowish nature and disperse in a linear pattern. Altering course for better examination of this color below. Note reddish or purple color also. Circle this area two full turns and return to assigned compass heading. 
position trend to base camp, and relay information concerning colorations in the ice and snow below. Zero, nine, ten hours. Both magnetic and chassis beginning to gyrate and wobble. We are unable to hold our heading by instrumentation. Take bearing with sun compass, yet all seems well. The drones are seemingly slow to respond and have luggage quality, but there is no indication of icing. Zero, nine, fifteen hours. In the distance, what appears to be mountains. Zero, nine, forty-nine hours. 29 minutes elapsed flight time from the first sighting of the mountains in illusion. They are mountains and are consisting of a small range that I have never seen before. 0955 hours. Out the range to 2,950 feet, encountering strong turbulence again. 1,000 hours. We are crossing over the small range and still proceeding northward as best as can be ascertained. Beyond the mountain range is what appears to be a valley with a small river or stream running through the center point. There should be no green valley below. Something is definitely wrong and abnormal here. We should be over ice and snow. To the port side is growing on the mountain slopes. Our navigation instruments are still spinning. The gyroscope is oscillating back and forth. 10 hours. I alter altitude to 1,400 feet and execute a sharp turn to better examine the valley below. It is green with a type of knit grass. The light here seems different. I cannot see the sun anymore. We make another left turn and we spot what seems to be a long of some kind below us. It appears to be an elephant. No, it looks more like a mammoth. This is incredible. Yet there it is. Increase altitude to 1,000 feet and take binoculars to better examine the animal. It is confirmed. It is definitely a mammoth-like animal. Report camp. 1030 hours. Encountering more rolling green hills now. The external temperature indicator reads 74 Fahrenheit. Continuing on our heading now. Navigation instruments seem normal now. I am puzzled over their actions, attempting to con Attack base radio is not functioning. 1130 hours. Countryside below is more level and normal, if I may use that word. And we spot what seems to be a city. This is impossible. Aircraft seems light and oddly buoyant. The controls refuse to respond. God. Off our port and start. All right, everybody. I'm going to stop it for just a second because I got to check my playlist. Hold on. I'm glad you asked me about this because it's been doing this. Unlock my playlist. For some reason, it's under private. So I'm glad I caught this. So um, everybody, if you want to know what I'm watching, this is what I'm watching. It's in my playlist. I'm sorry, but I accidentally locked it. So it's unlocked now. So if you go to my playlist, this is what I'm watching. Okay? And this is about Admiral Bird's journey to the North Pole. Admiral Bird went to the North Pole, and this is his flight log. We're going over Admiral Bird's flight log, all right? And it gets really interesting. His flight log, listen, I, I was in the Navy aviation. His flight log is the most interesting flight log I have ever heard about. So this flight log is interesting, and it points to everything we know. They are closing rapidly alongside. They are dish-shaped and have a radiant quality to them. Close enough now to see the markings on them. It's a type of swastika. This is fantastic. Where are we? What has happened? I tug at the control. They will not respond. We are caught in an invisible vice grip of some type. 1135 hours. Our radio crack. Crackles through in English with what is perhaps a slight Nordic or Germanic accent. The message is, welcome, Admiral, to our domain. We shall end in exactly seven minutes. Relax, Admiral, you are in good hands. I note the engines of our plane have stopped running. The aircraft is under control and is now turning itself. The controls are useless. 1140 hours. 
another radio message received. Begin the landing process now, and in moments, the plane shudders slightly and begins a descent as though caught in some great unseen elevator. The downward motion is, and we touch down with only a slight jolt. 1145 hours. I am making a hasty last entry in the flight log. Several men are approaching on foot toward our aircraft. They are tall with blonde hair. In the distance is a large shimmering city pulsating with rainbow hues of color. I do not know what is going to happen now, but I see no signs of weapons on those approaching. I hear now a voice ordering me by name to open the cargo door. Comply. End log. From this point, I write all the following events here from memory. It defies the imagination of input madness if it had not happened. The radio man and I are taken from the aircraft, and we are received in a most cordial manner. We were then boarded on a storm-like conveyance with no wheels. It moves us toward the glowing city with great swiftness. As we approach, the city seems to be made of a crystal material. Soon we arrive at a large building that is a type I have never seen before. It appears to be right out of the design board of Frank Lloyd Wright, or perhaps more correctly, a Buck Rogers setting. We are given some type of warm beverage, which tasted like nothing I have ever savored before. It is delicious. After a bit, two of our wondrous appearing hosts come to our quarters and announce that I am to accompany them. I have no choice but to comply. I leave my radio man behind, and we walk distance and enter into what seems to be an elevator. We descend downward for some moments. The machine stops and the door lifts suddenly upward. We then from a long hallway that is lit by a rose-colored light that seems to be emanating from the very walls themselves. One of the beings motions for us to stop before a great door. Over the door is an inscription that I cannot read. The great door slides noiselessly open and I am beckoned to enter. One of my hosts speaks. Have no fear, Admiral. You are to have an audience with the master. I step inside and my eyes adjust to the beautiful coloration that seems to be filling the room then i began to see my surroundings what greeted my eyes is the most beautiful sight of an entire existence it is in fact too beautiful to describe it is exquisite and delicate i do not think there exists a human term that can describe it in any detail with justice thoughts are interrupted in a cordial manner by a warm rich voice of melodious quality i bid you welcome to our domain admiral I see a man with the features and with the etching of years upon his face. He is seated at a long table. He motions me to sit down in one of the chairs. After I am seated, he places his fingertips together and smiles. He speaks softly again and conveys the following. We have let you enter here who are of noble character and well known on the surface world, Admiral. Surface world. I half gasped under my breath. Yes, the replies with a smile. You are in the domain of the Ariani, the inner world of Earth. We shall not long delay your mission, and you will be safely escorted back, back to the city for a distance beyond. But now, Admiral, I shall tell you why you have been summoned here. Our interest rightly begins just after your race exploded the bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. It was at that alarming time we sent our flying machines, the Flugelrads, to your surface world gate what your race had done. That is of course past history now, my dear Admiral, but I must continue on. You see, we have never interfered before in this wars and barbarity, but now we must, for you have learned to tamper with a certain power that is not for man, namely that of atomic energy. Mercenaries have already delivered messages to the powers of your world, and yet they do not heed. Now you have been chosen to be witness here that our world does exist. See, our culture and science is many thousands of years beyond your race, Admiral. I interrupted, but what does this have to do? Master's eyes seemed to penetrate deeply into my mind, and after studying me for a few moments, he replied, Your race has reached the point of no for there are those among you who would destroy your very world rather than relinquish their power as they know it. I nodded, and the Master continued. In 95 and afterward, we tried to contact your race, but our efforts were met with hostility, and our flugelrads were fired upon. 
Yes, even pursue animosity by your fighter planes. So now I say to you, my son, there is a great storm gathering in your world, a black fury that will not spend it for years. There will be no answer in your arms. There will be no safety in your science. It may rage on until every flower of your culture is trained and all human things are leveled at vast chaos. Your recent war was only a prelude of what is yet to come for your race. We here see it more clearly with God. Do you say I am mistaken? No, I answer. It happened once before. The Dark Ages came and they lasted for more than 500 years. Yes, my son, replied the master. The Dark Ages that will come now for your race will cover the earth like a pall. But I believe that some of your race will live through the storm. Beyond that, I cannot say. We see at a great distance a new world stirring from the ruins of your race, seeking its lost and legendary truths, and they will be here, my son, safe in our keeping. When that time arrives, we shall come forward again to help you revive your culture and your race. Perhaps by then, you will have learned the futility of war and its strife, and after that time, certain of your culture and science will be returned for your race to be given, you, my son, are to return to the surface world with this message. With these closing words, our meeting seemed at an end. I stood for a moment as a dream, but yet I knew this was reality, and for some strange reason, I bowed slightly, either out of respect or humility. I do not know which. Suddenly, I was again aware that the two beautiful hosts who had brought me here were again at my side. This way, Admiral, mentioned one. I turned one before leaving and looked back toward the master. A gentle smile was etched on his delicate and ancient face. Farewell, my son, he spoke. Then he gestured with a slender hand a motion of peace, and our meeting was truly ended. He walked back through the great door of the master's chamber and once again entered into the elevator. The door slid silently downward, and we were once again going upward. One of my hosts spoke again. We must now make haste, Admiral, as the master desired. To do. I said nothing. All of this was almost beyond belief, and once again my thoughts faded as we stopped. I entered the room and was again with my radio man. He had an anxious expression on his face. As I approached, I said, It is all right, how it's all right, and soon arrived back at the aircraft. The engines were idling, and we boarded immediately. The whole atmosphere seemed charged now with a certain air of urgency. After the cargo door was closed, the aircraft was immediately lifted by that unseen force in altitude of 2,700 feet. Two of the aircraft were alongside for some distance, guiding us on our return way. I must state here the airspeed indicator reading, yet we were moving along at a very rapid rate. Entry flight log continues. 0 to 15 hours. A radio message comes through. You now, Admiral. Your controls are free. Off we descend. Watch for a moment as the flugelrads disappeared into the pale blue sky. It suddenly fell as though caught in a sharp downdraft for a moment. We quickly recovered her control. We do not speak for some time. Each man has his thoughts. Zero to twenty hours. We are again over the vast areas of ice and snow, approximately twenty-seven minutes from base camp. We radio them. They bump. We report all conditions normal. Normal. Base camp expresses relief at our reestablished contact. Zero three three hundred. We land smoothly at base camp. I have a mission. End log entries. March eleventh, nineteen forty-seven. I have just attended a staff meeting at the. I have stated fully my discovery and the message from the master. All is duly recorded. The president has been advised. I am now detained for several hours, six hours thirty-nine minutes to be exact. I am interviewed by top security forces and a medical team. It was an ordeal. I am under control via the national security provisions of the United States of America. I am ordered to remain silent in regard to all that I have learned on behalf of humanity. Incredible. I am reminded that I am a military man and I must obey orders. December 30th, 1956. Final entry. I write this diary in secrecy and obscurity. It concerns my Arctic flight of the 19th day of February in the year of 1947. When the rationality of men must fade into insignificance and one must accept the inevitability of the truth.
I am not at liberty to disclose the following document of this writing. Perhaps it shall never see the light of public scrutiny, but I must do my duty and record here for all to one day read. These last few years since 1947 have not been kind. I now make my final entry in this singular diary. In closing, I must state that I have faithfully kept this letter as directed all these years. It has been completely against my values of moral right. Now I seem to sense the long night coming on and this secret will not die. But as all truth shall, it will triumph, and so it shall. This can be the only hope for mankind. I have seen the truth, and it has quickened my spirit and me free. I have done my duty towards the monstrous military-industrial complex. Now, the long night begins to approach, but there shall be no end. Just as the long night of the Arctic ends, the brilliant sunshine of truth shall come again, and those who are of darkness shall fall in its light. For I mean that land beyond the pole, that center of the great unknown. Admiral Richard E. Byrd, United States Navy, December 24, 96. All right, everybody. So that was Admiral Byrd. All right. Um, it's in my playlist. All right, I'm pretty sure the quality of this video uh, threw really well. But um, let's talk about where he went to, all right? Let's talk about where Admiral Bird where Admiral Bird went to, all right? So according to the, the map that I have, this one's from 53. This island here, you can see that little white mark. I haven't finished painting everything, but this island here presents where the flight log started. All right. The flight log from Admiral Byrd started here. So when he was flying over this water here, this is the frozen Arctic that um, everybody knows about. Now, I believe he went to this land. I think because this is the closest land and he went north. So I think he went here to this land. So when he across the frozen Arctic, he noticed a mountain range. He could see a mountain range. And the mountain range that he saw was on this land here. Okay. And the green valleys and the temperature difference is when he got across the mountain range and it was nice warm weather. And where he's seen the mammoth and um, the you, uh, the aircraft that looked like um, flying disc, this is where he was. And the city that it, that was shining multiple hues of the rainbow was one of the cities that are here. So Admiral Byrd log is from this island, Slavabad. Spitzenberg, Spitzenberg, Slavabad. And this is where he flew. To. Modern maps show this as a, a frozen ocean. Old maps, show, old maps show the lands that Admiral Byrd went to. And this is the island that he started from. And he flew north. Beyond 90 degrees north. He flew beyond 90 degrees north, everybody. 90 degrees north is not the farthest north you can go. You can go way beyond that. <laughs> so, oh, actually, so Danielle says, I want to be a gold digger. I do too. I One of my favorite shows actually it's probably my favorite show is gold rush you guys probably heard of the show gold rush i think that's a pretty interesting show i love the fact that these guys are just basically mining show i love watching all mining show i, I watch ozzy gold i watch um outback opal hunters i watch people go out in the wilderness dig in the dirt and 
<laughs> make money, make money digging in the dirt. All right. You know, destruction trade and, uh, you know, lately uh, for um, each summer, it's normally been um, driving dump truck doing driveways, digging in the dirt. But if I could dig in the dirt, pulling out gold or dig in the dirt and pull out precious stones that are worth something, that seems to me to be the best way because you're living naturally, I guess. To me, that's a natural. I mean, but now I, I mentioned the rivers. Now, I have heard reports. Most of these reports come from the soldiers. Watertown, Watertown is right next to a base called Fort Drum. And um, Fort Drum has two rivers that run through it, uh, the Indian River and the Black River. And the Indian River and the Black River. Now, for years and years, I've heard reports that up on Drum that gold has been found by this just, you know, they're out there doing uh, whatever they're doing, but they come across it. And I've heard this years and year after year after year when I mention it, because I like to talk to people. And I talked to soldiers, and one of the soldiers is one of my subscribers. Um, one of my subscribers told me that he knows about the gold, and he wants to come up and do some panning. He's got pans. He said he would go pan the rivers with me and uh, go look for gold. And uh, I said, well, that's, cool, man. that's really cool. I think that would be something um, I would like to do. And he said he's already got the gold pans. He sent me a link to where I could get one. I mean. Uh, but I thought about it because I, I'll be honest with you, looking for gold has been in my mind for years, but I've never, now last year, was it last year or two years ago? I was down there and didn't, now let me tell you, I did look for gold and I thought, I thought I found some, but I, I was unsure and it was so small that I could barely tell, but I'm going to have been gold. I was down on the Black River here, right in the heart of the city of Watertown. And there was like, you know, like an old, like peanuts lid, like a plants lid, right? I was sitting on the bedrock. I was sitting on the bedrock and I seen an old plastic um, peanuts top. It looked like a small little pan, pan for gold a little bit. So I went over to the bedrock where I found a bunch of uh, black sand and I put the sand on the, on the, um, on the lid. And I slowly just started to pan it down. You know, I don't know what I'm doing, right? I'm using a little peanut lid, right? I really don't know how to do it, but I've watched those where I've tried it, right? And when I looked into it, like when I got it down low enough, down I seen a piece of gold. Now, it was so tiny. It was so tiny. Like I, I don't even know how I would have picked it up, right? It was so tiny. I, I don't even know how I would have picked it up. But I was like, is that gold for real? But I had no idea. So I did just, I didn't know. And I just, but I was like, I don't know. Because I'm telling you, because when I did, it looked, looked like a piece so tiny. It looked like uh, what they find up in Alaska. But um, it's got my curiosity. Let's put it that, that way. Um, because think about this. Doesn't the Lord say seek and find, right? Seek and find, right? Seek and find. I'll be honest with you, pretty much. Um, and every time, but um, pretty much when I head out into the woods seeking whether, you know, if I'm going after an animal or um, whatever, or whatever I'm seeking, if I'm going out in the woods and I'm looking for something or go fishing, you know, you go fishing, you go seeking for a fish. Um, you're going to find it. You're going to find it. I think if I go seeking and looking for gold, because I've heard reports over the years, people, and it's how cool would that be, right? Go down to the river and pan up some gold. And no, oh, no, that'd be pretty cool. Now, how much would you get? Probably not, nothing, really. You probably work all day long and probably get $5. Probably is, maybe that's all you might find. So yeah, Danielle. Yeah, oh, Danielle said that um, her husband's been laid off. Yeah, I know everybody's getting laid off. Um, businesses are closed. 
Um, so here, here's the main point, people. All these people have been telling me to go out and get a real job. Like, go get a job, go get a job, go get a job, go get a job. Right, go out and get a job. Now, it's been such a long time where I um, worked 40 hours a week. It's not how I live my life anymore. I don't live my life 40 hours a week on the clock. I don't live that lifestyle anymore. But this, what's going on now is a perfect example of why working for an employer is not something you should be doing. Because working for an employer has never gotten me anywhere in life. And let's say, let's say that I did have a, a 40 hour a week employer like the, like the norm would be. I would be home anyway right now. I'd be home anyway. Now, how do I survive? I survive um, because my, I, I'm on food stamps and my rent is taken care of. If there was the cash, people ask me, you know, they ask me if I can help them out. So, you know, perfect example the other day, um, I had to help somebody go move some furniture. All right, cool. And uh, usually in the winter, there's not much work to be found anyway, because the type of work I do is outside work. So most of my work is outside work. So I got a little thing in there. But the thing is, is the little cash flow that I had, the little cash flow that I did have is gone. So. I'm down to my last ten dollars in cash. That's and on the card, um, on um, the on the uh, PayPal card for the channel, there's ninety nine cents on there. So there's ninety nine cents on there. So so that's it. And there's no prospects to even know. Like I like I can't even call people. Like, I've already tried calling somebody that I've done work for for years. years. Nothing's going on. I can't even get myself out of this situation, even if I wanted to. Unless who? Unless your medical, media, government. Because, you know, like, medical, media, and government are the only ones that are running right now. Now, you got to grocery right you got grocery stores but those people they all those jobs are filled i mean how what are we supposed to do they said there's supposed to be a check coming now does that mean for me probably not this check be coming i'll be very surprised i'll be very surprised if i'm one of the people that get a check I know. Do they even know where I live? I mean, yeah, but does the feds know? Where, you know, are they going to really send me a check? And if they do, how long is it going to be? Because I'm going to look at my finances, what I got on my food stamps, and the cash that I got on me. If I only bought food only, if I only bought food only, I might have a week left. I, if I only bought food only, I have a week left. So Miranda, she's working. So Miranda gets the, so Miranda's still working. That's good. That's cool. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complete mess. I've started to take my cans back. My cans on my back porch have been accumulating. 
Because in New York, we uh, recycle. Like, this is what I don't understand. Here's one thing that I think is good that the rest of us don't do. We recycle our bottles and cans, all right? That's something we do up here. Um, oh, I had to take some cans back to go to the store today to go buy. Uh, so they finally had toilet paper. They finally had toilet paper. I, said, I, got, I got enough cans back there. Let me take some cans back. Because thank goodness, now the store has a limit. The store has a limit. You can only take back, back 50 at a time. So that's only $2.50. You can only do $2.50. So that's enough to buy. So, I mean, that's what I needed. But I'm like, I'm down to bringing my um, cans back so I can save on to that last $10. I don't want the last $10 on nothing, people. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's my last $10. It's like, what am I going to do? What am I, like, I don't want to spend it. All right? I don't want to spend that last ten dollars. Jeez, I'm freaking out. I can't even. I don't even know what to do. Can't even go out and get a job. Oh, well, yeah. Both of you guys are in Minnesota. Yeah. So, and Charity are both in Minnesota. Cool, cool. I've been through Minnesota quite, um, quite a bit. Um, last time was. was Minneapolis. Seems like every time I go to Minnesota, I'm always find myself going through Minneapolis. So you did, Miranda? Well, thank you. God bless you, Miranda. Thank you. Um, I'm sure I'll get the notification. My phone probably died by now. But um, I should plug my phone in. It's probably dead by now. No, but almost. But I do got to plug my phone in. Well, thank you, Miranda. Thank you for helping me out. I'm sure I'll get that notification later, but. Cool. Mankato. I'm going to have to look up. I don't even know where Mankato. I'll be honest with you. I haven't heard of Mankato. Um, so everybody, um, <laughs> wow, thank you, um, thank you, wow, so, I don't want to, well, is your name, your, oh, your name's your name anyway, so I hope you don't mind this, but, I'm going to show everybody the balance now of what the balance is of my PayPal, so everybody knows what my balance is. Oh, thank you. So, and 99 cents, I don't like it, but can you see that? I'm just trying to cover up the name there. There's some personal information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miranda. Wow, oh, thank you. Um, that's cool that you both are, um, right close to each other. How far away are you guys? Are you guys far from each other, Miranda? Are you guys like, like close? I don't even know how you guys are close or not. Couple hours, yeah. Minnesota is pretty big. Too. You guys are a couple hours away. Yeah, that's what. Like so far, um, man. Besides, I I can't really count my local friends because they were already my friends already. Um, but for other people, 
it seems like for her in New York, everybody seems to be at least a couple of hours away from me. Uh, Matt's down in Bingham, and then there's another guy that's over by uh, Rochester. And then there's New York City, has some New York City. And then, oh, um, somebody new came by earlier in the week, and he was from St. Lawrence County, which is – Depending on where he is, he's anywhere from one to two hours away from me also. But it seems like I haven't really found anybody else through my channels on hour or so. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Maybe you guys can hang out and meet up now. That's cool. That's cool. You guys uh, live close to um so let me talk i've met well i've talked to a couple of my subscribers um matt has offered a couple cottages in the springtime on the on st lawrence river we can all get together up there and then uh there's another subscriber that i, I talked to that um we talked about looking for gold all right we got talking about that one night like for an hour for an hour talking about um, cause he used to be in the, he was stationed up there and he's detected and looked and then I, now I can't remember if he said he did find gold there or he knows gold there. One of the two, but either way, we're going to go looking. Um, but I want to go looking today. I mean, why not? Really? That'd be fun. It'd be, could you imagine going down the river and finding a little nugget? Now that little, right now it's about I had to look at the price. I would have to check the price. Around fifty dollars a gram. Gold is around fifty dollars a gram. That's pretty expensive. Like that's pretty good. And you're talking about a little rock is a gram is fifty dollars. <laughs> One little rock that weighs would be a small. A fifty dollar piece would be smaller than nail. half the size of my nail would be fifty dollars if you find a little tiny piece of gold. I don't know. We, I all these shows, and we. It looks like we had the geology, because I'm looking at the geology of the rocks and the sand and the minerals, and we have all that plus all the reports that I've heard from actual people. I don't care what you look up on the internet. I'm talking to people about over the years, so it's just something that I'm fascinated with. That you could go into the earth and just like find treasure, <laughs> find treasure in the earth. I think it's pretty fascinating. Um, so anyway, uh, let's get back to um, what this video was about because we got off topic for a while. Um, this video of Admiral Byrd is a, of his flight log from Slavabad in Spitzenberg. To here now, they call it a Garthia. I don't know what the name of this city is that he went to, but the flight log is a reference of going to here to here. Okay, so, um, wow. Well, how you guys are gonna meet up? Why don't you guys, uh, that'd be cool. Harry, you're doing YouTube now. Um, record something you guys do or something. Like, record you guys' meetup or something and put it up. Put it up on YouTube or something if you guys meet up. Make a video. Because I know, Charity, you're doing videos now. I'm watching and liking. I'm watching your videos. <laughs> um, oops, wrong one. Oh, Miranda, I just got your message, Miranda. Um, I didn't see you send a message with um, your gift. Thank you. Listen, I'm just speaking out up here. And what 
happened was I just got sick of going out on the streets and talking to people about flat earth. Oh, it's Tommy is trying to reconnect. So um, I just got I just got sick and tired of I didn't see nothing happening. I knew that there had to be some kind of policy change with with the government. So that's why I to go um, to City Hall, talk to my mayor, and all these things. It's because I want real change, not what's going on. Because you got all these great people in, the, in our community. If you're a biblical flat earth, this is the community I'm talking flat earthers. How come nobody's um, trying to have a relationship with somebody that can actually change things? You know what I mean? So when I go to City Hall and I, when I come here, there are multi. I have I have not seen my mayor's tax returns, people. I have not seen my mayor's tax returns, but. He owns his own medical practice. Chances are he's his own. He's a millionaire. Okay, so I'm trying to get this in a whole different class of people because it seems because this is what I've noticed. It seems that the working poor, the working poor, seem to uh, ex much easier than the white collar workers it seems that the white collar workers are much more harder to convince of the truth but it seems it's easier because i've noticed that um if you already have a distrust of the government if you already distrust our government you're more likely to listen to what i say but if you believe that their government's good for us and you believe everything they're telling us and you believe the report, yeah, you're going to dismiss me right away. But Miranda, I've just, uh, yeah, so my, uh, he's a doctor. Now, I did ask him on the phone about the coronavirus. And, of course, he gave me a little spiel. So. My doctor did give me the medical spear, spiel over the coronavirus, yeah. But when I asked him, I said, what is the symbol? I said, what is the symbol of the medical field? And he said, the, the, the snake is on, on there, the serpent. I said, I want to talk to the Christian man, is what I said to him. I said, I want to talk to the Christian man. I don't want to talk to the doctor. I don't want to talk to the I want to talk to the Christian man when I talk to you. All right. So, but here's what I think about what's going on. I honestly believe, I honestly believe that my mayor really does have truth and he's willing to keep communications open with me, which is, hey, that's pretty good. That's the progress in my book. All right. So all you haters out there that are hating on me, I'm making real progress here. Watertown, New York is making real progress when it comes to flat earth reform and trying to make policy change. Now, we're being shut down, but my mayor still won't do an interview. So I have an interview with the mayor coming up this week. So does anybody have any particular questions, um, any advice? Because I have a, I will be interviewing the mayor, Jeff Smith, sometime. So, um, so does anybody have any questions that maybe I should be asking the mayor or any, any points? I should, or just any in any advice, because I'm interviewing the mayor, people, my second time. So, 
I've already got one under, I've already interviewed the mayor once. So that's on there if you want to see that. You got to scroll down quite a ways if you want to find that interview. Um, videos ago. Oh, Gary. We got Gary. We got Gary. Hi, Gary. Oh, this. oh, Gary. Gary, just for you. So nobody blocked Gary. So Miranda. I was, okay, very good. Miranda says you should bring up viruses and how they work. I thought about asking him that. So, yeah. So, Miranda, if you don't know who Gary is, we kind of let, we let Gary say what he says. Overall, Gary's proven himself that he's not going to be disrespectful and say, like, stuff. All right. For the most part, Gary, he could stay around. He's like the one guy that I'll allow um, coming over here talking to smack. I got something for you, Gary. Now, um, I don't know if you wanted to stop by or you can run India, but Gary, now, I got a couple of flyers for you, Gary. All right. One's on, you know what? Let's talk about the Bible first. All right. There's, there's 10 things on the Bible. All right, for scripture and what the Bible teaches. All right, what the see that? Did you know that the Bible teaches flat earth? Let's teach that. And then there's another one here. It's on science. All right, the science. All right, okay, Gary. So I got a couple flyers for you, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Just relax. Now listen. You're right. You're right. Because here's the whole thing. I truly believe that Gary does have a love for the truth. Gary, I do believe it. I do believe, Gary, you have a love for the truth. All right. But don't make me change my mind about that, all right, buddy? Because I like that you come around and, and say what you got to say. Um, but you're right. I won't listen to nobody that's going to tell me Earth is spinning through space. You're right. You're right, Gary. I will not listen to nobody tell me about Earth is moving, flying through space. You're right. I got time for the. I got time for the lie. And Gary's a local. Oh, Gary got my email. I've given out my email. I've given out my email so many times. Gary, you, I'll give you my email. You've never even asked me for your email. That's the wrong. I just put, I just wrote my old ad. That's not the right one. All right. Well, that's my email address right here. Yeah, my charity knows my my address email address is but there it is again. There it is again. But yeah. My address is out there. If you watch any of my city council, I, my address is out there. I mean, okay. Oh, uh, maybe I did tell you no. You're right. Get, maybe I did. Maybe asked me. I was like, nah, I don't want to listen to you. But Gary, but Gary, okay, Gary, we can let's have that open minded discussion. Okay, okay, Gary. Gary, you better give me the best proof on why you think it's a spinning ball, all right? So um, send me all the information that leads you to believe that Earth is a spinning ball. I'll look at it. 
and I'll give you a honest review of what you send me. So email me this. I will go over whatever you send me. And uh, maybe if you, I'll even email you my phone number so we can talk on the phone so it'll be easier to talk or whatever it is. I don't even care. I'll put my phone number out there if anybody say phone number. That's my phone number. What's that, Gary? What's my favor to ask? Let's see if I will grant your favor. Depending on what you ask, I'll say yes or no. But while you ask me, I got to go find my, I got to go get a glass of water. Question, Gary. Okay. All right. Cool. We can break it two flyers for you. I got one on the Bible and one on science. So I can break it down two ways. We can break it down two ways. So everybody, I'm just waiting for Gary to finish telling me what he's telling me. Yeah, this is a telescope. I got, uh, Miranda asked me what's next to me. It's a telescope. My brother gave it to me. My brother had a brand new telescope sitting in a box for almost, he said it, he said it must have been sitting in the bunny years, right? I was like, really? You got a telescope that's brand new in the box? He's like, yeah, do you want me to bring it over? I'm like, yeah, over. So he brings it over, right? And he's right. This thing was brand new in a box. Not even, we had to assemble it. Every little screw we had to put together, right? I'm like, this. I couldn't believe how much assembly was required. There was a, there was a lot of assembly. Together. And I was like, wow, dude. And he knew that at first he wanted to sell it to me. My brother, you know, he's a little jerk. But my brother at first wanted to sell it to me. And then um, he seen that I liked it so much, he gave it to me. So that was really him to give it to me. Because really, come on, brother. It was sitting brand new in a box for 10 years and you had no use for it. I used that. So I use my telescope quite a bit. And it's cheap. In order to buy one like this, if you were to go to the store, probably $50. Maybe a little 60 bucks, maybe 50, 60 bucks, really, if you have to buy that at the store. But it works good. You zoom right down the moon with it. You can look at the stars with it. But the thing is, you can't deal with it. I can't take video with it, so I really need – yeah, I'll be honest with you. Um, a P900 would do way better than that telescope. A P900 would do way better. If you were, anybody's already got one, a P900 is better than that telescope. Just to let everybody know. 
This would be like a P400. <laughs> if this was a, like a can, it would be like a P400 compared to the 900. And there's even a P1000. So uh, it still works, though. It still works great. I mean, you could zoom in on the moon and stars or anything really you want to look at. So, right? What a nice brother. My brother is not a Christian, and my brother is not a flat earther. So this is what happened. He had one. He's like, oh, I'm going to go make some money off my brother. And then, you know, because I told him when he, because he, I said, you know what? I said, I want it for it. And so he just give it to me. And he's like, all right. I talked him into giving it to me. But he's seen that I liked it so much. He gave it to me. So, yeah, eventually I'd like to go get one of those P900s or one of them P1000s. Um, it'd be, plus, everything I look through, I can just upload it. You know, you know, this is just plain optical. This is plain optics. You just got to look down it. No, it's great. I, if you don't have a telescope, get one. They're cheap. You could probably find them on Craigslist or uh, online. Really cheap, man. But here's the whole thing. I want a really nice one, though. One day, I thought about trying to make my own. Because really, you need two lenses and a long tube. And just something, the focal point that slides back and forth. A couple tubes, a couple lenses, and something that slides back and forth so you can focus. I mean, it's a pretty simple thing. Oh, and this is what's great. This right here destroys NASA. This destroys NASA, everybody. Destroys NASA. So Gary, what's Gary say? I haven't heard what Gary said in a while. But anyway, um, Gary, let's you look at the stars through the telescope and see if NASA's stars are the same of what we observe. So we can observe through the telescope what the moon versus what NASA tells us the moon surface is, okay? This right here alone destroys science. This one little piece of equipment right there. And I was very blessed. Now, one thing that God, and it's been, this happens all the time. And it happened today. It was happened right on live. God caused somebody to give to me. It's amazing. Seek first the kingdom of God, right? You know that old saying that, you know, the Bible says, seek first. You know, everybody's been saying that for years. Seek first the kingdom of God, right? When you really seek first the kingdom of God, things are added to you. All right? Things are added to you. My house is filled with free things. Or people have, God has caused people to give to me. My whole life, listen, my rent, my food, everything is taken care of. Now, do I want to get off assistance? Absolutely. But it was a safety net because I needed it. I, I need help. And Anybody wants to come against me and say, oh, whatever, I don't care. I needed help, so I went and got help. So ain't no big deal. If you need assistance, there's programs in place. So, I mean, why not? I mean, it's there to help you. It wasn't Here's the whole thing. If I didn't have that for help, I don't even know where I'd be. But... Yeah, they have all these fake imaging and all this CGI animation, but let's not talk, Gary. Let's not even talk, Gary. Let's just observe. Just We'll just set the telescope up. That's what we can do. He's probably going to email me. So he's like, what happened to Gary? Um, so Gary said he's, he's probably going to email me whatever he wants to talk to me about because he's got my email or he's got, he can text me now. He's got my number. But listen, anybody, 
My phone does not receive um, any. Here's the problem. My phone does not get any pictures. No pictures. I cannot send or receive pictures on, on my phone. It's one of those glitches in my phone that it can't be fixed and it can't download. It, it's the dumbest thing in the world. I don't understand it. But my email, you can send whatever, you know, pictures, long messages in my email. All right. So, so like, got like proof of a earth of space. Pictures on my phone, which it, it annoys me. It annoys me, but it's just, I don't know why it does it. But anyway, Gary, if you want to email me, whatever it is, Gary, just email me whatever pictures or proofs or whatever. I really put my number out there for phone calls if you want to call. But, but anyway, anyway, people, it's long enough. Um, basically, this is about Admiral Byrd. I wanted to talk about that. And... Um, if things get if things get too too bad, like where the power goes off and there's rot and it's just not good, I'm going there myself. I'll be going there. I'm gonna go there regardless. But um, if things go quicker, then I'll maybe going quicker than I thought because I got like a five or ten year plan to go here. Um, I might have to. Stop. <laughs> I don't want to have to speed that up. But um, because I wanted to like actually work hard, money up, get a ship, and go up that way myself. But um, I just wanted to talk about the hidden land that um had been wiped off the maps because our history is complete lies, and I'm just doing my examine all the evidence. So, um, Gary, here's some. Let me give some advice to Gary real quick. I listen, Gary. I already know. No matter what you bring to me to prove the Earth is a spinning ball through space, whatever you bring, right? Whatever you bring in that argument, I'm telling you right now. I've already examined what you're what you were going to bring up. Whatever picture points that you're going to bring up or facts that you think are facts, I guaranteed I've already examined that. But I will give you a word. I will re-examine it. I'll re-examine whatever you want to send me in case I miss, in case I miss something, Gary. You're right, Gary. I, I could have missed it. It's spinning through space. No, I, there's no way. But I will examine whatever um, you want to send me. And I'll take a I'll take a look, but I'll look at what you sent me. But chances are I've already examined this before. But anyway, everybody, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks again. I'll just come by uh, Charity, Miranda, Gary, and then I think Danielle was Danielle. Yeah, Danielle was already here. Um, I don't know if Danielle. Was here. Um, who else was in here? There's a lot of other people right there. Yeah. I don't know here. Bye. I love everybody. Thanks for coming by. Thanks, everybody.